Welcome to Tales from the Majestic Mothership. Majestic Hudson fosters connection, inspires creativity, and supports a compassionate lifestyle one blissful experience at a time. Please follow us at MajesticHudson.com and all social media where we can help you follow your bliss. Welcome back to potentially a more consistent <laughs> air date. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's 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 you know we're back on track. Yeah, it feels it feels so. School's good. in. School is in. <laughs> School's in for fall, kitties. And now I can say that it's fall because it actually is. It is. Thank you. You you got it now. We got it. I know. I know, I know. Now it's I'm easy. allowed to make all those pumpkin spice references. I don't know. I'm going to make you put like a quarter in a jar after every time. I know. <laughs> it's going to be fine. It it's will. Fun. The pumpkin spice jar. Exactly. So, yeah, it's a beautiful day. It's Tuesday. It is. I like it doing is. stuff like this on my days off. I know. My head is more clear. Same here. I don't have class on Tuesday, so it's oh, sort of yeah, the same like a, amount. The weekend. Of, it feels yeah. like Saturday on a Tuesday. And I, I, I kind of like it because there's no traffic. There's nothing yeah. going on. No. Nope. You sleep in and you don't think you still have to like run to the farmer's market or something. Before I know. It it's there so is no nice. farmer's market. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Everyone's like at work if they do like their typical nine to five. So, so we're city- not being bothered by anybody. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Everyone's in the office or they're all at sweet green for their lunch break. <laughs> most oh people know. Most people are at the point where like, don't bother Jen on Tuesday. Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> want her to stay in a good mood because yeah. the witch will come out. The bad witch. It's not true. Witch. It's yeah. true. No, we're, feeling, I'm a good witch. we're feeling like a little spooky. Like not. Yeah, we're getting we're, there. We're not going all out, but like it's getting close to making its debut. Like it is. Yeah. Like it's I, October in my head. It's October. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm already planning like the movie marathon for my roommates and myself for October because I finally get full monopoly during the month of October over the scary oh. movies. Oh, you the, do? Yes. Because I'm never allowed to watch my scary movies in the house because People, my roommates get too scared and they want nothing to do with it. I wouldn't want you to do that either. Yeah, no, no one does. And I respect (laughs) it, but I'm also like, fuck. But in October, (laughs) I get to show my true colors. So we're doing the classic Nightmare on Elm Street. We're doing The Conjuring. Halloween. Yeah, Halloween. We're doing Saw. We're doing it all. We're doing... It's but like it's it's like the the comfort, you know, it's like comfort creepy. Of like, okay, I get it. I, yeah. I get it. Everybody's got something. Yeah. I don't have an actual like parallel reference to that. That's fair. I don't I don't even I can't even go there. There's not well, even you, something funny. You like reading the spooky. That's what you like. Oh, yeah. Read. Well, I mean, we're going to do some of that today. Oh, and that, I have to I know because I have to start thinking about what I'm going to read for it's October. True. It's Because last year I read The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Mm-hmm. And you guys seem to like that. But I yeah. can't do that again. So I have to find something like equally gothic. Yeah. Victorian or something. Yeah. Oh, God. You know, I wish I wish there was like a short version of Interview with the Vampire. Oh, totally. Yes. I, I know. I would go crazy about that. I literally did a dedication to Anne Rice on this cast. I think I read something by her. You her did. Life. Yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah, I love that definitely. woman. Great writer. I know. You could do also like maybe Carmilla. Like Carmilla mm. is the novella. I'm pretty sure. So it's mm. it's definitely shorter and sweet. Yeah, and it's be shorter. Yeah. Yeah, and it's the first vampire story ever. Like before Dracula. Oh. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, and it's it's about a female vampire. Um, so before Mary Shelley had like that going on. Oh yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. A couple decades before, I think. Um, okay. But yeah, it's it's definitely one of the greater vampire stories ever told, and it got forgotten. But oh, I'm going to look great. into that one. That yeah. might be. I mean, I'm sure it's as long as Sleepy Hollow. So yeah, I got to start like you know drinking my my tea, get oh, my yeah. pipes warmed up. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah. So now yeah. we're ready. We're ready to take on fall in style. Basically, amazing, amazing. Yep. It got my rat and my cat. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, we're all good to go. I know I'm yeah. gonna definitely bring the cat to the store this this soon enough. She totally doesn't really should. like it that much, but you know. No, really? I feel like there'd be so much to smell. 
Yeah, I don't know. He guess I guess he's just a little bit. I guess he's more introverted than we ex- we think. I guess that's fair. That's you know? true. Yeah, it's definitely his world, and we're all just living in it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like kind of the opposite. He's right. like, do not take me to another realm. Do not take me to the mothership. <laughs> but I will. Yeah. Because I'm just a witch that wants her cat around. It's on true. The rig. I think, I mean, I want to definitely read something towards the end. We'll start totally. with a little teaser of something spooky. Right. And, but I thought we have to do some folklore and we could get totally. like micro scary. Like I'm not, I don't like throwing dirty things at people. You know? No, no. They, I do it, that. I do that on my own time. My off yeah, time. we do. We do that. We have our yeah. own depressive people. People don't know. You don't need to know what happens when the microphone is off. <laughs> Yeah, we're not we're not doing a uh, a recorded viewing of the Saw franchise. That's yeah, exactly. that's that's for my my off hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and you 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 don't need to know like um, what was I? Oh, but I can't even tell that story. Oh well, forget it. <laughs> See, some we all have secrets. And for the mics, folks, just use <laughs> your imagination. It's, it's all good. Yes, but let's get into some folklore, and then I thought. We could talk, so um, we should talk about the evil eye. That's the folklore. Yes. Right? Totally. Everybody, everybody's into the evil eye in general. I, I know. Mean, it's, it's a huge symbol. We'll talk, but then I want to talk about um, some crystals that we may, that may come across as having, being a little scary. Yeah. Not totally. that we can't utilize them to, to great positive effects, but yeah. But like a good witch, you have to use them effectively. Yeah. You can't totally. just fuck around with crystals, people. No. They're no. our friends. They are our friends. They're they're very much like they fall into the witchy category of all the things we love. Cats, crystals, you know, you can interact with them, you can love them, you can utilize them to your yes. emotional benefit. Right. But it has to be on their terms. Yes. And it's like, it's kind of like that saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Yes. Well, we're going to tell you about the, the crystals that, you know, could go wrong on you if right. we don't keep them close and know yeah. enough about them. Like our, <laughs> like our famously known mortal enemies, uh, Stephanie and Hare. Yes. Uh, <laughs> of course, we're, we're at odds just constantly with those two <laughs> fuckers. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's definitely, oh. and I think it's also, it's fun to get a little spooky. There's some crystals yeah, that it's not are the year. totally beneficial, but they come from, you know, they've got some interesting kind of spooktastic origins, yes. you know? So I don't know. Oh. It's fun to explore it. Yeah, totally. We're going to just throw those out there because we thought you guys should know. Yeah. Um, and it just makes it fun. So, but first, I definitely want to talk about the evil eye. Yeah. Duh. Great. Because, I mean, it's its origin goes way back, like superstitions and whatnot, right to Mesopotamia, right? But like, yeah. first of all, the name, it's Italian anyway, if you were like to really draw out the true name of the evil eye, right? It's Malocchio. Malocchio. Exactly. And I can say that because my birth name is Nuccio. <laughs> okay. So I didn't even have to practice that. It's true. <laughs> Came naturally. She was born for this and this only. <laughs> exactly. It was yeah. born for this moment in time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, what do you know about the evil eye? Well, the thing that I um, thought was just the most one of the more fascinating facts that I looked into was it's just been universally prevalent in practically all cultures Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. every every almost there's so many languages that have um evil eye in their language which is fascinating linguistically because there are a lot of terms in like romance languages, Arabic, even English that mm-hmm. cannot be translated into other languages. Um, that's why when you read a book that's translated in French, it's never going to be a direct word for word template for what was in English, mm-hmm. which is why this is so fascinating culturally, because in Turkish, Greek, Hebrew, Romanian, Italian, Spanish, Arabic, mm-hmm. Persian, huh. they all have evil eye as like an exact translation. 
Um, that's crazy. That's yeah. a kind of a cool fact. I really yeah. like that. That's a yeah. fun fact. Yeah. So I know for all my linguistic nerds, I don't know. I I'm not a linguistic expert, but my roommate is a freak for it. And so <laughs> that's definitely something that she really appreciated because there's it's it's nearly impossible to get direct translations. But evil eye is an almost entirely universal symbol uh, for so many cultures. So um, interesting. It's great. And, you know, like the symbol too, like aesthetically, Um. I want to look into that a little bit too. We should have like thought about that. Like, why has <laughs> it always gotten into the blue, the yeah. blue with the white, you know, definitely, that's, you know, that's very like, kind of, those are, I'm going to look into that in a minute. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, and it's, it's been around for about 5,000 years. Um, and like I said, it's been present across various religions and cultures but where it ended up being the most prevalent uh, was uh, witchcraft, uh, yeah. yes. which is just so it's fun. You know, like I love me. I mean, Salem's a 40 minute drive from where I live. Love me the witchy things. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's going to be great. like bumper to bumper there and about. Two yeah, weeks I know. Now, actually. I know. OK, yeah. I already figured it out. Mm. Where's our resident ceramicist? Althea would love this um, because it was either made with um, ceramic, mud, or glass. Oh, okay. right. When they actually created this symbol. Yeah. Right? Um, and obviously, it's like beads of like, you know, the Agent Islands or totally. Asia Minor, all the kinds. So they were always like trying to improve their like glass production. Yeah. But the Egyptian, it, it, the blue in itself originally came from Egyptian culture. Mm. right because when egyptian glazed mud contains a high percentage of oxides and copper which and cobalt which gives it the glue the blue color when blank when baked wow now that is some fine art people yeah totally you know so we covered our linguistic nerds and our ceramic <laughs> nerds <laughs> we got a fact for everyone yeah oh yeah. my god so Here's the funny thing. So when people talk about the evil eye, right? They, it's like kind of that thing, like, I don't know. I haven't really like seen this. I'm sure it's been in a movie or something where like, you know, somebody kind of gives you the snake eye. Oh, yeah. You know, like, yeah, I don't like you. You're making it's... me a little bit jealous and feeling inferior about myself. Yeah. And you might be better looking than me. So I'm going to put a curse on you. <laughs> and they sound just like that when they do it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They have much deeper rooted ego problems than I, but. <laughs> um, so it's like when the, the, as it goes, at least in Italian culture, we're going to, it's like, you know, you, someone stares or glares you down. Mm -hmm. you know, based upon whatever it is that they want you yeah. to feel terrible about yourself. Yeah. It's like ancient RBF. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> nice. Resting bitch face has been a, an ancient <laughs> practice for many, many years. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah. Mm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they're giving you they're, they're Then they like look deep into your soul and they give you the malocchio, right? And then it's like, you've been cursed then the rest of your life is just downward spiral apparently. Yeah. And you got to get that shit fixed. You got to call somebody like us. Yeah. To fix that. Obviously. You know, yeah. like, you know, you just don't want to wrong, wrong the wrong people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Karma's real guys. <laughs> it is a thousand percent. Yes. Yes. So that's one version. Did you find anything? I mean, it's all about this, like being deeply cursed, the potent yeah. power of the curse and the, the curse has been like bestowed on you. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like they give you, you know, they give you a disease, this curse or something. Well, um, it's, it's so fascinating too, because it, in, in relation to sort of its versatility, you know, I feel like when we talk about curses and hexes, it's kind of exclusively attributed to witchcraft and Salem mm -hmm. and, yep. and, but historically it's been going on for years, you know, yeah, I mean, I like mean, forever. Yeah. Like if you, if you look at even like Cassandra, you know, from mm -hmm. like Greek stories, she was cursed mm -hmm. with, you know, 
like being able to tell the future and everyone just thought she was a lunatic right uh when really she carried wisdom um and was able to perceive death and destruction so it's just so interesting because not only is it a kind of almost completely universal translation but also in what it represents it's very well known and widespread throughout all the cultures. And when attributing, you know, the practice of hexes and karma and bad luck, like yeah. that's seen all over the freaking place. Right. So the evil eye is just sort of like an encapsulation of all that, basically. It, it's also like I look at it, what you know, whether it's the language you said you were talking about, right? Yeah. Um, but the image and the 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 actual like lore of it all mm -hmm. are all the same and the image like that that yeah. that image the evil eye the blue eye is also universal yeah it transcends time and space yeah so it is quite magical actually it's like, like the one thing everyone agrees on on what yeah. it means what it is <laughs> like no one is there's no like black and white on what it represents <laughs> it's like the the first thing that all the cultures are like oh yeah it means this it's what this yeah. should mean yeah i mean like, like a lot of people question it which is why we're here but right. they know that it means it's some kind of protection definitely yeah you know? um and i i do i i kind of applaud that in different ways because it's oh, yeah. something it's it's there's very few images that have transcended time and yeah. and space really if you want to really put it that way yeah. um so he uh Here's I like this this little thing that came up. Um, an eye for an eye. I like how they said an eye for an eye. <laughs> the title of this one on um, great on the BBC. Love <laughs> it. Um, belief in the evil eye has transcended mere superstition, with a number of elevated thinkers attesting to its veracity. One of the most notable examples was the Greek philosopher Plutarch, who in his symposiacs suggested a scientific explanation that the human eye had the power of realizing invisible rays of energy that were in some uh, were in some ways cases potent enough to excuse me for saying this in advance kill children or small animals oh what's more plutarch claims that certain people possess an even stronger ability to fascinate citing that groups of people to the black sea being uncannily proficient at bestowing upon people this curse wow so and that so that they're most adept at delivering the curse. One it said that ones who are most adept at delivering the curse have blue eyes. Oh, because yeah. it's a genetic rarity in the Mediterranean. I feel like that also must stem from you know like how it was shown through like the glass and the clay too. Yes, I'm sure yes. that helped sort of carry that message. Um, that's crazy. I'm going to literally waddle up to all my siblings and be like, guys are fucked. Like, <laughs> like I'm the only brown eyed girl here. You all are freaking doomed. Yeah. Cursing people left and right. You don't well, know it. Uh, yeah, it's like, I, I you know, I want to look up right now. Is there any way we could find it? What are the best? Who are the best blue eyed goddesses of Mediterranean? Yeah, totally. Athena. Oh, well, duh. Yeah. She got blue eyes? That never mm -hmm. came up. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Bright eyed with gleaming eyes. Wow. Um, let's see. There's a lot of ones. Mariana, La Mer, because she had, you know, ocean eyes look mm -hmm. like the ocean. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, those are a couple. Wow. I wonder if, even though like we're not near the Black Sea, like what, where the Hudson Valley uh natives fall on the ranking of being able to distribute the curse oh my god that there may be a part two so yeah who knows there may be a part two thank you for bringing us back around to our current <laughs> domain yes exactly <laughs> we're we're traveling all over the globe right now mentally Will the so. blue-eyed goddesses of the hudson valley please get in touch with us during yeah. the season please uh, stand up <laughs> Please stand yeah, up. Yeah. Refrain from cursing me. Just bring the information this way. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> Kindly. Close um, your eyes to avoid <laughs> potentially oh passing god. it on. Oh my god. So, so funny. funny. So speaking of the goddesses and those types of things, I have to start with one weird poem getting into 
season. Yes. Um, I'm going to do Lenore at the end, but I'm definitely need to do her kind by mm-hmm. Anne Sexton because it's so witchy. Yeah. And I've, I've probably done like three TikToks on this already, folks. <laughs> I've, refrained from, I've refrained from posting any of them because <laughs> people can be like, Jen might be suicidal. We might need to take care of her. No, I'm kidding. But, you know, I'm a happy poet. All right. Her Kind by Anne Sexton. I have gone out a possessed witch, haunting the black air, braver at night, dreaming evil. I have done my hitch over the plain houses, light by light, lonely thing, 12 fingered out of mind. A woman like that is not a woman quite. I have been her kind. I've found the warm caves in the woods and filled them with skillets, carvings, shelves, closets, silks, innumerable goods. Fixed the suppers for the worms and the elves, whining, rearranging the disaligned. A woman like that is misunderstood. I have been her kind. I have ridden in your cart, driver, waved my nude arms at villages going by, Learning the last bright routes, survivor, where your flames still bite my thigh and my ribs crack where your wheels wind. A woman like that is not ashamed to die. I have been her kind. So Anne Sexton was basically giving the evil eye to everybody. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. I love that. There's so one. much empowerment there. like, And it's very, um, it's a ritual. That is a ritual poem. It's talking yeah. about her doing a ritual. Yeah. Embracing her femininity. Femininity. Mm-hmm. Femininity. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just she, drinking lemon water, folks. Yeah, I, I know. know. What's happening here. She's a proud um, feminist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. Yeah, I love it, though. I mean, I think, you know, especially with some of the, you know, stigma that comes from rituals and witchcraft and so forth. Like, it's so nice to to read a piece from a different period that not only celebrates that, but personifies it and makes it come yes. to life on the page as, you know, someone who's currently going to school for creative writing. That's something that I deeply appreciate. Yeah. Um, and I think everyone can get something from it too, whether you're a writer, a woman, a you know spiritual holistic liver, majestic mm-hmm. tribe member. Like, <laughs> I think I think there's there's so he much just, there. I know. You know that <laughs> He's cue. like, that's me. <laughs> you know? I just I don't know. I just I think there's there's so much to take away there, and I think it's it's applicable to everybody in some form or another. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a great one. And it's perfectly spooky. I'm loving the debut for the spook. Exactly. It's Maybe great. I'll another one for next time. If we're, I don't know what our time is. You might totally. Be, but um, so, okay. This is so, our annual uh, announcement to say don't fucking buy Moldavite. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> get off of that part of Etsy. Go <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, because first yes. of all, it might also just be like, you know, not moldavite <laughs> right yeah i mean for you starters, just have some weird placebo effect yeah then then you get yeah the first bad thing that could happen is you just get ripped off uh yeah, the second yeah. bad thing that could happen is you don't get ripped off <laughs> and it's well, the real deal tell tell them the story you found out about the mollusks oh okay well that, this that is cool it this is more cool than I creepy. I think it, it's yeah. dependent. We're trying not on... to creep you guys out. We just no. like, like you know, witchcraft is a little bit yeah. about um, morphing and shape shifting and things like that. And you could do that physically with right. your psyche, but your your aura. Like at the end of the day, we're here to help you protect your aura. So information is power. How about totally? That? Yeah, and I, the creeping people out is really truly where I shine sometimes no. too well <laughs> you know this is where i emerge i believe the halloween episode we did last year i was wearing a black wig uh oh my god we have to do that again we have yeah, to do that again. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but the the really cool fact that i found that was just like a little mystical and creepy mm-hmm. um was the fact that 
uh, crystals and stones can uh, naturally form from some living organisms, which mm-hmm. I found fascinating because we normally attribute it to, you know, they're found in caves or like, you know, underground under like insane amounts of pressure. Um, so we're taking a deep, deep dive into the ocean, which we know practically nothing about, uh, scientifically speaking. Um, and we, I found that most mollusks and corals naturally produce argonite as a shell or an endoskeleton. Huh? Yes. So um, they make their own skeleton. They, yes, they produce their <sighs> own skeleton and they produce argonite and it's a natural ability to produce the crystal as protection against predators. Whoa. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, you know, it's their, I think endo is internal. So it's the argonite inside. They Whoa. have argonite inside plating their skeleton for protection against predators. Okay. That's kind of wicked cool. I know. That I is thought like, so too. it's like, imagine we could like sit here and be like magic wand and like, bing. Yep. Like, I want to be my skeleton to be covered in aquamarine or like, to be pre- <laughs> preaching to the choir <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, or any other thing like you know you're totally. walking into like a meeting with or some kind of it's like zing black tourmaline yep I'm i done. dude if my skeleton <laughs> was plated with black tourmaline i would never have an issue again we won't need a biomat anymore hey you know yeah. what people ask you for your superpower what superpower do you want i want to be able to coat my skeleton in any crystal i want it any yeah crystal. Can you imagine? You wouldn't have to put a crystal in your pocket ever again. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Do you know how many like... times I've lost crystals to a washing machine because <laughs> I forgot that it was in there? You know, if I if my time. skeleton was plated, I would never have to do that again. <laughs> I wouldn't have to put crystals in my bath. Yep. They would just be there. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> Remember when I put amethyst in my pocket and I got too harmonious and I crashed into a lamppost on a bike? Like <laughs> I should have had a different one plated on my skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time I had to go to the bank so I wouldn't bounce a check? Imagine if my skeleton was covered in pyrite. <laughs> 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 oh my god we could just keep going oh god this is hysterical oh it's my so god funny oh, oh god. i never That's ever thought in my 23 years of being alive i would be jealous of a mollusk but <laughs> <laughs> here we are <laughs> i swear to god when i go to the beach in the summer though i'm just amazed i just like i just yeah for all you guys out there who can't see me I, my mouth is you know my chin's on the it's table it's a gape yep it's like it's a full open gape it's like oh my god what that long thing creates a conch shell this big that little egg yep. um we um Althea found a seahorse this summer an <gasps> actual live wow. seahorse wow which was perfect timing because it was just past Roe versus Wade decision got overturned and it's oh. like you know what horses carry babies yeah and fucking the Republicans can learn a fucking thing from that. Sorry. Totally. Had to no. do it. Had to say it. I did it. I did yeah, it. you should have. We're talking about witch power, man. That yeah. totally applies. Yeah, exactly. You know? You know? Yeah. It transcends all genders, people. It's true. Oh, my God. Oh, okay. I know. Um. So I think that it's important to say um, one thing with the evil eye, though, is that it is said that you do, if you have been cursed by the evil eye, you do have to have somebody release the curse or do something very ritualistic in order to rewind or dissolve the 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 curse that's been put upon your your aura. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a ritual that needs to take place to relinquish you from from. I that. mean, there's literally like phrases in the bible Ellie. yeah yeah for I example know. ezekiel 27 yeah said to them cast away each of you the detestable things of his eyes and do not defile yourselves with the idols of egypt i am the lord your god that'll fix it <laughs> <laughs> that was just one i'm not yeah. going to the quran <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, it, but it's so crazy. Like it's, it's, 
it's prevalent in so many different religions and cultures. Like I just, it's so wild. Even, even some of the people who, who, for whatever their beliefs are like adamantly against it, like it's in their culture too, you know, right? What, whether they know it or not. Um, and I just think that's super cool. Um, it's just, you know, like we're all, we're all connected, man. We've yeah. all got the got the image right there. Even with the mollusks, guys. Like it's like they're they're the heel. But you know, we can learn a thing or two from the mollusks. Mollusks. I yeah. just I just can't speak today. No, you got uh, it. I mean, that in a way it's a heal, it's a healing ritual. And we yeah. do that with our aura. How do yeah. we how do we dispel the the being a victim of the evil eye? We cleanse. Yeah. Aura. And we, it's it's so like amazing and purposeful and a celebration of the cycle of life. That's something that a living creature produces for protection is something that we then go on to use for protection. Yeah. I just think that's, that's that's dope. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's very, it's also like very concrete. I mean, I love that that analogy also is the analogy of the skeleton, which is also like, you know, kind of a hyped up image during um, Halloween. Right. But then like, actual witches and healers that were to actually dispel any kind of evil presence you know they're they're using like oils and water and fire yeah you know, that's accompanied by like sacred prayer mm-hmm. and health free so there's like this dichotomy of great freedom but also totally. great protection great actual physical protection totally yeah i love I it just, probably also why they made it out of like you know ceramic and glass Probably. Absolutely. You know, there's like a whole nother thing about it being crafted. Yeah. I bet you like the local dude in every town who made evil eyes to like, he's got, he's like, he's got it going on. He must, yeah. always, must have been just like skipping through town. <laughs> hurt Probably. <laughs> it was like fucking try and curse me. You won't be able to do it. The Pied Piper of Malokyo. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. god so funny amazing um i'm just gonna throw in a little little herbal tip though for the season too like uh, we haven't gotten too much herbal stuff but we we will we're talking about herbs now they're on the reg we might talk about chants you know these are all on our lists but <clears throat> you know basil is a big protective healer did you know that the herb really basil. oh yeah. i'm gonna have so many spaghetti pomodoros then <laughs> <laughs> like for real, like, like it is like one of the top ones for protection. Perfect. Basil and rue. Like I've used it in many, many a ritual, I have many a ritual. Oh, that's great. To yeah. Know. And it also brings like abundance on and things of that sort. Yeah. I mean, um, I've always thought nobody can touch me when I'm eating a spaghetti pomodoro. I now, I, now I know why. <laughs> yes. So it's like, don't go near her. She's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's got a pizza. I got the baby. <laughs> I mean, that that's been universally true for years. <laughs> Don't come near me when I'm eating a pizza. <laughs> but now it has spiritual <laughs> integrity to it. <laughs> a thousand percent. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm dying. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, my God. All right. I hope you guys are laughing along. <laughs> I think I put bit basil in the new spellcasters box. Totally. Um, with our last four and a half minutes, do you want to read your... Lenore. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, let's do that. Great. Um, okay, we've gone through so many cool things. But yeah, yeah. I'm going to close with one more really cool get us into the Halloween spirit. Yeah. Um, I mean, how could I not read some Edgar Allan Poe? I mean, tis right. the season. So get this one. This one is actually talks about their, the evil eye is in this poem. Okay. So, so we have, it's called uh, um, Lenore. Okay. Lenore. Ah, broken is the golden bowl, the spirit flown forever. Let the bell toll, a saintly soul floats in the Stygian river, and Guy de Vere, howst thou not tear, weep now or nevermore. See, on yon drear and rigid bier lies low thy love, Lenore. Come, let the burial rite be read, let the funeral song be sung, an anthem for the queenliest dead that ever died so young, a dirge for her 
the doubly dead in that she died so young. Wretches, you loved her for her wealth and hated her for her pride. And when she fell in feeble health, ye blessed her that she died. How shall the ritual then be read? The requiem how be sung? By you, by yours, the evil eye, by yours, the slanderous tongue that did to death the innocent that died and died so young. Peck amidst the rave, not thus. Let a Sabbath song go up to God so solemnly the dead may feel so wrong. The sweet Lenore hath gone before with hope that flew beside, leaving thee wild for the dear child that should have been thy bride. For her, the fair and debonair, and now so lowly lies the life upon her yellow hair, but not within her eyes. The life still there upon her hair, the death upon her eyes. Avaunt tonight, my heart is light. No dirge will I upraise, but waft the angel on her flight with the pain of old days. Let no bell toll, lest her sweet soul amid its hallowed mirth should catch the note as it doth float up from the damned earth to friends above, from fiends below. The indignant ghost is riven from hell onto a high estate far up within the heaven from grief and groan to a golden throne beside the king of heaven. Amazing. There's so much in there. Yeah. Queenliest died. <laughs> no, right? Ritual. Like, oh, uh, we amazing. need to like dive into that one a little bit more. It's like totally. a moment of silence for Lenore. Jeez. I know. They, she like that. Clearly people liked her. Yeah. <laughs> But resented her for her pride. Like, I mean, it's just. It's... Yeah, she, somebody, somebody put the evil eye on her. Yeah, totally. And we weren't there to reverse it. No. I'm so we sorry. Were, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We should have been born sooner. I know. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, <laughs> Maybe another time. Yes, exactly. But but there you go. Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. Um, That's actually one something I could. What's that other one? Oh, no. The Raven. Oh yeah, that's the a raven. Good one. That is yeah. a good one. Well, but maybe next week. Get yeah, we should have it. We, we should up. do more October. Yeah, on the lead up to Halloween, we got a spooky poem per yeah. episode. It would be really fun, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've got you guys covered from all evil eyes. So hang in there. Yep. And um, we'll be seeing. We'll be talking to you soon enough. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.